Best offer I've had all week. Now, when a young lad from Manchester answered an ad looking for four insane boys aged between 17 to 21, he never realised he was about to join a band which was to rival the Beatles. All four of them became recording and TV stars as the Monkees. But the front man was undoubtedly my next guest. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Davy Jones. <laughs> That's the first hug I've had today. Thank you. Oh, no. A it's hug not. a day? That's important. Oh, to at everybody. least one hug. You must get hugged every day, everybody. At least one hug. It is very good to see you. Lovely to see very you. Very good to see and you. And it's great that I can touch the floor with my feet, too. <laughs> yeah, no, couch. Yeah, it's usually a big couch and you can't touch the floor. Made for me, you see. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's for you. It's lovely. Specifically. It's a lovely set, too. Good. I'm glad you like it. Nice and it's... fresh and happy, isn't oh, it? Oh, good. All right. Hey, I think we're off to a very good start here with Davy Jones <laughs> of the Monkees. Was the Monkees the first band? put together specifically for a TV show? Uh, I hope so, because that's what I've been telling everyone for 30 years. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was really, it was a show about a rock and roll group. It was a spin-off of uh, a, um, a Hard Day's Night, really. The Beatles, A Hard Day's Night. But it was on every week. It was a TV show that we did, filmed in California, with Mickey, Mikey and Petey and uh, myself. We had a great time. We were all 20 years old, 21 years old, so you can imagine the feeling when we had hit records and we toured around the world and people liked what we did. So, you know, it was a total plus. In a world of no's, we got a lot of yeses. Why did they take on a Brit? Well, I was there at the time, wasn't I? And I just pushed my way forward like I used to in the fish and chip shop and say, I'm next. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they took me on. I was actually signed to Columbia Pictures. I was there in New York uh, for three years prior to the Monkees doing Oliver. I was playing the Artful Dodger. And uh, Columbia Pictures had me signed to a long-term contract, and then they put me into the monkeys when the show came along, and it just worked out perfect for me. Did they write the scripts around your personalities? Because they were very clear-cut, the differences between the four lads. You know, you each had areas that you're very funny in. Mickey Lenz was the nutty one. Yeah. You were the sort of front guy, the lead one, that we were well, all in love with. Well, what they did, they, they wanted four different guys. And the idea at the beginning, when they had the ad in, in, in this sort of uh, theatrical paper in, in Hollywood, they said, wanted four insane boys. And they named a, a restaurant called Ben Frank's. And they said, Ben Frank types. It was sort of like a trendy little restaurant in Hollywood where you had the long-haired guys that used to go in there and strange kind of folky people, you know, beatniks as they call them in the early 60s or late 50s in England. And they wanted four guys that looked completely different. One, you know, if their heads were in the sand and their bums were sticking up in the air, you'd know who they were. And I guess we all did have little roles that we played, but Peter Tork was certainly not a dummy. He was a very intelligent, mm. very accomplished musician. And Mike Nesmith, he was uh, certainly a bit of a, a sort of a, he had a lot of authority and he had a lot of a, sort of a leadership. He was supposed to be the leader of the band, really. Mm -hmm. He was the one that figured everything. Mickey was funny and I, fortunately, got the girls. You know? did. <laughs> Sometimes did. I'd fall in love twice in an episode. It was wonderful. <laughs> did you, off screen, did you feel you had to live up to that very clean cut image? that was it, conveyed on screen. It's always, it's always something that you have to... It's a responsibility, being uh, um, an entertainer, because people do look at you. So there are certain times when it gets too much for you, uh, and, and you feel like, oh, I just want to just do something naughty, you know? But um, it, I think once you're in the public eye, you've got to watch what you do. I mean, you can, you can sort of like... Um, you know, look back at, the, say, the Brit Awards, you know, and see what happened on a thing like that, and think, oh, my goodness. This is the show. You know, imagine if one of the audience came running up here right now and started oh, they dancing. Do. They do. Oh, Believe they me, do. you have to watch oh, it. I tell you, they'll be at those seats as soon as you mention it. I wish you had You have to it. be very professional and you have to be very sort of like aware of what other people's feelings might be towards you. So you just don't do certain things that are going to offend. Mm. And sometimes it's not always right for you, but it's right for the, the total, you know, overall picture. So mm. you've got to be careful what you do. Well, the Jones dynasty of entertainers goes on, of course. <laughs> and at this point, I'd like to bring on, well, one of the closest women to Davy Jones' heart, his daughter, Sarah Lee Jones. Sarah! <laughs> Thank 
to you. Right. Thank you. Now, here we have it completely the other way around, you see. The stateside girl who's now come <laughs> over here to star in Annie's Bar. Yes. How did, it, how did that come about? Well, I just, I decided that I would try England out for a while and uh, with a bit of influence. And I came over and um, auditioned for it and got the part. Oh, there you are. are you having fun with it? That's so much fun. It's she fantastic. She's got a new series, actually, that's going to come out. It's a children's series called... Yeah, I have another series coming out. I shot that first, actually. I shot a What's series for, for um, ITV called The Adventures of Captain Veleg. I'm Captain Veleg. Right. Yes, I saved How, the planet. Now, you've worked an awful lot <laughs> in the States the before. Planet. Well, it's about time somebody did, so yeah. I'm very glad that you're here, Sarah Lee, to do I'm, that. You're telling me. <laughs> I know. How do the methods dif differ when you work on a TV show in the States to, to here? Well, in this, in Annie's bar in particular, um, they give us a lot of freedom. They they really give us a lot of freedom of, as actors to just kind of go. And um, I was telling Dad earlier that uh, one time the director just said, "Okay, now forget everything that you just learned and just kind of stick to the script, but just make up something." So they just kind of they want it really fresh, and they give you the freedom to create that, which is really nice. They got that idea that. from the monkeys, it's, really, didn't they? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> it's a similar really kind nice. of show, you know. Oh, yeah. Is it yeah. lovely having a home, having a here? Well, you know, I travel all the time, and Sarah lives in London, and uh, w we live in Hampshire, which is just now outside of Portsmouth is where, where the house is, but I'm in America all the time working. Right. I travel, and you know, this year's the monkey's 30th anniversary. What's going to happen for that? Well, hopefully we're all going to get together and uh, uh, go in the studio, cut an album, and... Um, um, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll tour the world and England will be one of the places we'll come. Are they still all friends, Sarah? You can oh, absolutely. Oh, friends. yeah, they are. Oh, I went yeah, to they're see they're them all in the actor's great. home last week. They're all doing very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I went over no. to Mike and I said to Mike, yeah, do you know who I am? <laughs> and he said to me, ask the nurse, she'll tell you. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah, meanwhile, there you are. At the age of, and I'm sure you don't mind me saying it, at the age of 50, oh, winning, God. winning a race, a horse race. Yeah, now, what, what did it feel yeah, like watching your dad going over the last few, well, you know, the last few all, cases well, at Linkfield? I can't watch. I hate watching because it's the scariest thing watching. Oh, Is we it? just saw the picture there of you looking uh, so elated. Uh, oh, in, in her seven dollar coat that I got from Oxfam. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a cool coat? Yeah, so, oh, no, it is the scariest thing watching. It is so unbelievable, but... Um, it's great doing it. Winning. You just, you know, he, he's been wanting to do it for so long, but it finally, it's just everything. On the horse him. that you bought him, are you racing yeah. now? Yeah, we're going to race again. the Grand National? Uh, no, it's the National's always been something in my, in my mind, you know, but I, as an owner, as a trainer, eventually when I finished, um, you know, sort of this particular phase of my life, I would like to get into training horses and get into a, a more sort of stable, steady sort of uh, uh, life. I travel an awful, awful lot. And uh, obviously it does affect the family and uh, it's nice to see Sarah out there doing it. I've got three other daughters. Besides Sarah, we've got, uh, Sarah's 24. Oops. And then uh, uh, there's Talia, she's 27. There's Annabelle, she's seven. And Jessica's uh, 14. So. so after you've won the national, you'll come back on with all of them, I hope. Yeah. But for now, yeah, best of luck with that. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Sarah Lee and Davy Jones. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's just about it for today. Make sure you join us on Pebble Mill next week when the glamorous Kate O'Mara will be here.